Hey everyone and welcome back. Got a new special snowflake for you. The intro was long enough, let's just dive right in. Enjoy. To be a Negro in this country and to be relatively conscious is to be in a state of rage almost all the time. That doesn't just apply to Negroes, that applies to all special snowflakes. Oh, and are you sure you're allowed to say the word Negro? James Baldwin wrote that in 1963. And unfortunately, it sometimes feels like in the intervening 52 years, not much has changed at all. Except now we have Twitter. Well, I'd say I'm surprised, but you know I'm not. So you actually think that the most notable thing in the last 50 years is Twitter. Why don't you just go fuck yourself? No, really, go fuck yourself. Kids a moron. That constant state of rage is too real, and it's a phenomenon that I like to call wokeness fatigue. <laughs> Pardon me, what? Okay, so you have the word woke, which stems from being awake, and then you have the word fatigue, which means being tired. Kinda goes without saying that being awake makes you tired, because the opposite of not being awake actually refreshes you. That's what we call sleep. Now I know this is slang originated by the Black Lives Matter movement, but it's a stupid word for stupid people who think Black Lives Matter is a good thing, which of course it's not. You start to become aware of injustice that's happening and you feel like in order to right the wrongs you have to be vigilant. Why would you think that's your job? What are you fucking Batman? What's the difference between you and me? I'm not wearing hockey pants. You have to bear witness for your people. Okay, so you are a religion. Who are dying. We're all dying, honey. What's your point? You feel like you have to spread the word to make sure that everyone is aware. See? That's exactly how a religious person speaks. Because as soon as we turn a blind eye to injustice, injustice wins. That's more like it. Give it a rest with your Batman routine. And I feel that. Hard. <sighs> Hard. No, no, you don't do it for me actually. But I think to some degree to carry that around in your mind and in your body really takes a toll. Why don't you give Twitter a rest then, you fucking retard? You wake up and you check your Twitter feed and it's another hashtag of another black kid's name. Yes, and isn't it funny how it invariably turns out that that quote unquote black kid was a fucking drug dealer who tried to kill the cops. Oh, but you don't care about that. You expect police officers to just die at their post, go down with a ship and all that. And not even 30 seconds into your day, it already feels like too much. We've been over this. Turn off your Twitter. Especially in the past few weeks where at least I felt like the entire sky is falling down and my arms are just not big enough to hold it all up. For fuck's sake, you guys, we've been over this too. It's not your job to hold up the world. So why don't you have a Coke and a smile and shut the fuck up? So you try to take care of yourself. You say, maybe today I'll just read the headlines, but I won't click the links. What happened? How about if you put your fucking phone down and get a job or go to school or something? And suddenly your feed is just looping GIF after looping GIF of Laquan McDonald getting gunned down in Chicago. What the fuck did I just say? Put the phone down. And you can't escape. Now, Evelyn makes a great point about this in her video, Calling in Black, but when it's day after day, it's really easy to sink pretty deep into a pit of despair that you just can't dig yourself out of. Yes, and doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, even though it always fucks up, is surprisingly not the definition of sanity. And you feel it, I feel it, in my mental and my physical health. Go on, whoa! Don't sneak up on a person like that. Oh yeah, especially the mental health part. So in the past week, I've had to step away for a little bit. Fucking finally. I deleted the Twitter app off of my phone, got rid of my Facebook. I've even been pretty quiet here on YouTube. See, I could have told you this. You could have asked me this and I would have told you. This is what you're supposed to do. Get the fuck away from your phone. And if you too are suffering from wokeness fatigue, I also want to encourage you to try to take a break. It's a sad state of affairs when you have to encourage people to have common sense. I think it's been really beneficial for me. Not to mention how beneficial it's been for your subscribers who didn't have to hear you bitch all the time. But now you're back bitching, so damn it. And I also think it's super important 
to try and take care of yourself and not let the constant digital barrage of white supremacy break you. Wait, what? Constant digital barrage of white supremacy. Hey, moron! Fucking moron! What the fuck? Do you live inside of a KKK collective or something? As much as it might feel this way, it's not your responsibility to bear witness to every single act of injustice. That's just impossible. Yeah, nobody except you and some idiot SJWs believe that. Normal people know that shit happens. Fortunately, there are so many of us speaking and watching and amplifying that it's okay if you need to sit it out a round or two. Yeah, I know, right? It's like having an army of retarded, drunken mid it's running around the internet. If you give yourself some time to step away and heal, you're going to be able to come back and be more useful to the movement anyway than you would have been able to be otherwise. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a useful idiot. And to any non-person of color allies who are watching this video, you know that you have the luxury of being able to step away and not constantly feel the effects of white supremacy deep within yourself. <laughs> supremacy is deep inside you right now. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, hey, big boy. Did somebody call for a plumber? Oh, you bet I did. My pipes are all clogged. Oh, it's okay. I brought my industrial strength snake. So just be patient when your POC friends need to ghost from the internet for a while. You're ghosting us, motherfucker. I don't care who you are back in the world. You give up this one more time, I'll bleed you. Real quiet, leave you here. Got that. And as much as you may also want to bear witness, just consider that real toll that all of the videos and gifs of these violent events, especially those ones that autoplay, can take on your friends of color. Oh, those poor black people, they can't take the gifs. Please save them from the gifs. My God, you're fragile little snowflakes, aren't you? Why don't you go ahead and grow some balls? Oh, wait. That's sexist. But here's the kicker. I don't care. So, do people watch what they say around you? Because I'm black. No, because you're gay. In the comments, I want to hear if you have ever experienced wokeness fatigue, whether it be for race or any other kind of issue, and how do you take care of yourself when you do? I think that after seeing this video, you probably have a fair understanding of my point of view on this thing. So I don't really see any point in commenting on your video even further. If you enjoyed hanging out with me here today, you can find links to all of my social medias down below. No, seriously, I don't want to talk to you. We're done here. Anyway, that concludes our show for tonight, so thanks for watching and see you next time.